Hey guys, welcome back to Fuel Trips and welcome to Mississippi. It's my first time in Mississippi, first time fishing here soon. It's the next state on my list, I'll be field tripping through. And I brought my good buddy Brooks Beatty here. If you follow the show, you've met him before. We've done some fishing, some episodes together. Yep. Uh, have you spent any time here in Mississippi? Not in probably like two decades, man. Uh, <laughs> my, my family's from here, my grandmother's from Mississippi, and I've been to a family reunion, but that was it. Never so, any fishing here? No fishing. Cool, so we have teamed up with the tourism board here in Mississippi. We are gonna be seeing all that this great state has to offer from top to bottom. We're starting here in North Mississippi at Hugh White State Park. We're gonna be running through the Delta, checking out museums, historical sites. We're gonna be meeting up with Steve Azar, a famous country star that was born and raised here in Mississippi. We're doing all kinds of stuff and of course, fishing all along the way. We're gonna be starting with some crappie up here in North Mississippi, the crappie capital of the world. The world record white crappie came out of this area. And we're gonna be working our way down and ending at the coast. I think this is gonna be a really cool series. We're really gonna dive deep into Mississippi, a state that I think really gets kind of overshadowed by a lot of the states nearby. Yeah. You know, Louisiana's got a really strong culture. Then you get over in Alabama and Florida. And I think Mississippi gets overlooked a lot. And we're here to find out if that's valid or if really people should be giving this place a better look. So we're here in the Keystone Cougar. Brooks is gonna be staying with me and that, for the next 12 days, we're gonna Ooh. be running through the state. It's gonna be tight, nice. it's gonna be cramped. But we're gonna, I think, have a really good time. So first up, we're meeting up with Granada Lake Fishing Charters. We're gonna be doing some crappie on Grenada Lake. I just said Granada, you can tell I'm not from Mississippi. <laughs> Grenada Lake, that's the area we're in. This place is legendary for crappie. Everybody I talked to said, if you're gonna go fish in Mississippi, you gotta do some crappie on Grenada Lake. So that's our first stop. We're gonna be doing that in the morning. Right now, we're just gonna finish kinda getting settled in here at Hugh White State Park, get everything set up, and then in the morning, we're gonna go meet up with the guide, see if we can't get in some crappie, and hopefully catch enough, do a little fish fry tomorrow. I'm excited. Perfect. Sounds perfect. It's gonna be a good time. So we'll see you guys in the morning at the lake. It's good to be back. Yeah, buddy. Slap Shack, check this out. How cool is this? Look at this. Morning. Morning, morning. Look at Jason. That's me. Oh, that's you. Hi, sir. Hey, how's it going, Robert? Great to meet you. And this is Brooks. How's it going, Jason? Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. How you doing? Man, this is. They were telling me last night how cool this place was, but I didn't realize it was, it was all this. We just got a big old rain, too. Yeah. <laughs> Just what y'all need it right now, right? Yeah. Where are you guys staying at? <laughs> We're staying at the state park, Hugh White. It's right there down below the, where it's coming out of the dam, I guess. So, yeah. yeah. Well, look, we got that big old rain last night, and uh, everybody's going to eat it. Okay. This morning, just because they found some fish up there late yesterday. Okay. So it's a different part of the lake? Well, this is the next lake north, 20 uh, minutes uh, north of here. Okay. And uh, they're catching a lot more fish up there. And, Every guy. Shane. Mark. Hey Shane, Robert, great to meet you, man. Y'all go up there and make a shot at it. That's gonna be the only from a boat fishing that's gonna be done. Is right now. Here, oh. it's a waste of time. You said it's like nine feet up the lake, huh? It's, uh, it's come up almost 10 feet in the last week. Wow. Y'all get up there. Oh, will we ride with you? Well, well, I, I have to move some take stuff around in that truck. Take take truck. Oh, I can follow, I can just follow you. Yeah, that's easy. My yeah. truck. Well, couldn't ask for a more beautiful morning. We're gonna get after him. Came over here to Lake Enid, a little bit better conditions than Grenada. Let's see if we can get on some fish. I'm feeling pretty confident. Let's go get them. We caught several white bass yesterday. Oh, is that right? Little, you know. I like eating white bass, but not when I got a thing full of crappie. That's right. <laughs> Long rod too, man. Look at that. 18 foot. 18 foot rods. The boat, my boat's 18 six. 
If my boat would have been a little bigger, I'd have had a little longer of a rod. <laughs> but it's, what's the minimum length on them here? 12 inches and under has to be immediately put back in the water. Well, so 12 on the dot, you gotta throw them back. That's right. And these minnows, right up under the bottom lip, not the tip of the nose, just like so. Yeah, so as luck would have it, we showed up here to Mississippi and I mean, it's just flooded right now. Lake Grenada's up nine, 10 feet right now, which just floods all this new timber and, and the crappie push up into that. So he said you can't even get a boat to where the crappie are at on that lake. So we came up here to Lake Enid, it's high too, I'm sure. We just had a storm last night, adding even more water to the mix, but hopefully we're gonna be able to find it. But that's gonna make it a little tricky. It's gonna change everything from yesterday when these guys were out. So uh, I guess we'll see what happens, but may have to spend a little time searching this morning and see if we can find them after that storm that came through. It woke us up. It was pretty, mm. it was a storm, mm -hmm. proper storm. <laughs> so I told them, I said, well, you try roofing houses for 26 years, you'll be ready to retire and go fishing. <laughs> Seven. Got a fish on two. Pick up your number two. Pick it up too. So well, I'll be damned. This <laughs> is not a netter. Not a netter. Well, that didn't take long. Look, look, here's what they do. Once you get him like this, just give him some line. Give him right. some line, and you can swing him to you. Yeah, got it. You don't make the team. You don't hate the team. We're still getting cameras set up, and uh, <laughs> first fish on. That didn't take long at all. They gotta be 12 inches, that guy definitely not qualify. Is that white crappie? That's a white crappie. White crappie. Well, hey, not a bad sign. All right, well, first fish on. Took all of a minute. We're basically just scanning these rods, watching the tips, and they're all bouncing with those weights, but it's a pretty kind of methodical bounce, and so we're just waiting for anything to look different. Anything Whether different. it's slacks or just little... Especially th if it's slacks. If it, if it comes up slack, because these crappie, they'll feed up. I've heard they'll that. They'll pick that up. If you see that joker come up, set the hook. Okay. Because as soon as he feels that two ounce lead or the tension of that pole, he's going to spit it. He's going to spit it right back out, right. Mm -hmm. So we got to be quick with this. Really be watching, be focusing the whole time. And then when you put in it, long brink, number one. There you go, on. there you go. Let me get this net. Hold on. Oh, that's a good one. That's a better one, right? That's a white bass. Oh, it sure is. All right, flip your bail over. Just flip the bail over flip it. All right. and put it back in the rod holder. All right. Sorry about that, Bob. I had to get the net. Man, well, not the target species, but there's fish. Y'all want to keep him? Man, I'd, I'd eat him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I edited the episode where... Where y'all ate a, a ton a of bunch of white bass. Yeah. yeah, they're delicious. Yeah, were... They're delicious. I mean, they're not crappie. Right. So, while well, we're not loading the boat with crappie, hey. Hey, Joe. Got fish. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Oh, 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 man, that's a good one. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. Just let him down in the net. Oh, bring him back into the net and then let him in it. Drop him in it. I can't go no further. There you go. <laughs> it's harder than, man, it's, it's hard aiming that thing at the end yeah. of 18 feet of hole. <laughs> Well, this guy there makes we, the team. Man, nice. Here you go. All right, well, here we go. First keeper crappie of the day. Brooksy here. I got it done. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, that's a white crappie? Yes, sir. Y'all get both there, though, right? We do. We have them both here. Man, that's a slab there. You can tell the white crappie because of his stripes. Yeah. See, the, those, this is a, a black crappie. It'll just, just look like someone specs. peppered him. Yeah. Uh. They call them specks in Florida. It's pretty fish. Nice work, yes, man. Sir. Good That'll eat, eh? That'll eat. Oh, yeah. He makes the team. <laughs> makes the team. It's been a while since I brought out the finger guns. Yeah, double finger guns. You know it's a good morning. How many minutes do we need? One or two? Uh, just one. The transducer is right here at zero, right here at the bottom. Okay. So out in front of us, we're looking out almost 40, 40 feet right now. And this is the depth here. So if you see something out here, what, what this thing does is it shoots a beam about 20 degrees straight out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're using this Garmin live scope, which is, I mean, literally in real time, you're seeing fish moving around. We're seeing crappie. He even just identified a bass different from a crappie coming through our thread. But this right here, that's the weight with the two minnows. If I lift up on this rod, you see it go up and then come back down. So we can sit here and literally watch some of our baits in real time. And we've seen fish come up and investigate. Sometimes if they stop, we'll look up, look at one of the rods and sure enough, we'll get hit. But we're able to watch this. We're seeing fish coming through. Some of them are looking at it. Some of them are just passing through, but 
pretty cool technology here, and that's shooting out in front of the boat up to up to about 30 feet out ahead. And technology these days, man. What will they think of next? <laughs> Well, this is what's rewarding about fishing to me, though. I mean, you would think, someone that doesn't know anything about fishing would think, well, hell, you're dragging 16 minnows through the water, 40 foot spread. It's just automatic. That's cheating, you know? You're just gonna catch a million fish, but it's still not easy. I mean, we're not getting tons of bites, and even when we do, we're dropping more than half of them. Oh. There you go. Oh. Uh, he won't make the team. This little guy. Not quite. <gasps> oh, oh, man. Good bite, good bite. Golly, I thought he was going to be way bigger than that. Another white bass on this one. Four, four. That oh, will pick up your four. Four, four. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, Better? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, he's pulling drag. Oh, big, oh, big black one, huh? That's black? Oh, crappy. He's just a male. Oh, really? Fish on your three. Oh, look, man. Oh, goodness. oh man, he's double fishing. That's another good one. Here. Man, you're getting all the action. Well, they school, so I mean, that's yeah. something, you know, when you get one bite, just gotta be ready for pretty fish. This one ain't gonna make the team, though. So he's not big enough, but so. But look, I'll show you. Nah, he's 11, a little over 11. But he doesn't keep. That's a cool one. You know, when, they, when they're spawning, the males will turn black like that. Mm. And when they're spawning, and they do that more, huh? We say he's got it. We, we say he's got his tuxedo on. He's ready for the party. Ready for the party. <laughs> trying to impress them ladies. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Good job. <laughs> Good job. That's the one we were looking for right away. Yeah, a keeper right here. While we got the drone in the air. One, 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 one. one. Oh, there's two of them. There's another one falling. Yeah, it was. You, you, got, you got two. You got a white and a crappie. Look at that. <laughs> Doubled up. Look at this. Two for one special over here for Brooksy. <laughs> and a variety pack. <laughs> Style points for the double. Yeah, right? Three, 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 three. Hold on, man. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's what you come after, huh? That's what we came out here for. That is more of the caliber fish we're looking for. Gosh, just look how, I mean, the, the thickness, the height of it. That is it. She's got a belly on her. Let me get a picture too. Man, look at her mouth. Bucket mouth. Man. Get this guy to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Nope, that's a fish. I can't tell. If, oh, it's a white bass. God, dog, I ain't got enough hands. I told you it was doing something. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. You got it. What you got going on there, buddy? <laughs> a cluster. <laughs> kind of a lot to juggle here. I don't even know which, where are these hooks. That's my number three. It goes, goes from being <laughs> yeah, like relaxed, calm just hanging out to zero to a hundred real quick, as yeah, the kids say. Cool. Oh, I'm either. Oh. Eating my biscuit. Double uh -oh. tasking. Uh oh. <laughs> got a sausage biscuit in one hand, 18 foot rod in the other. Man, he's close. He might. Oh, he oh he'll go. Yeah. <laughs> gotta eat the biscuit, man. That's the trick. <laughs> That'll lead two. Brooks got the hot hand on the keepers. Thanks, bud. Yeah. <laughs> got him. I saw it. Yeah. So it's number one. There Hold you on. Go. There you go. Let me get this in order. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Yeah, man, nice. <laughs> All right, now we're getting a fish fry going. Just missed one there, and I mean, it wasn't five seconds after he put the minnows back in the water. <laughs> three, 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 pick it up. Oh, oh my, oh my. Get it in the net. No. Oh. oh, that was a three pounder, dude. That was a three pounder. I looked down at my camera. That's, that was oh, a man. giant. Oh, what did I do? Dude, I, I thought it was a black bass or something. No, it was a three pounder, dude. It took my brain like five seconds to verify that was a crop. I was like, no the, way. The mouth on no, it was... Are you kidding me? I'm that was a giant. That was a three pound. Yeah, I gave it slack. That, that would have slaughtered my personal slack, best crop. Yeah. And I was almost there with the yeah. nasty. Man. Dad, gum it. That would have made the trip. Bro. That would have made the, that, yeah. Way to mess that, that, that up, bro. Th uh, you're not this, lying. That know. number three, you're right. Dude, it, it's but what, hey, that was, that was a fish there, though. It's one of those things, it's like, there's so many cameras here, but it's just my instincts, I like, know, camera right? on. Just don't even yeah, worry yeah, about it. But yeah, fish, I mean, I golly, that thing came with the surface. I was like, oh, that ain't a, oh my God, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, the wow. big old mouth on it. Thank you. That was a, dang, boy. That was that three was pounds. A, it had to be three, three pounds. God, it looked like eight from here. That thing came up, <laughs> that was so big. That's crazy, right around, like, all the, I mean, we're just right in the middle of everyone. Yeah. yeah. We just, we got the best guide, man. Oh, man. Four, 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 four. 
shoot. Oh, oh man, God, this one, this one. He buried the pole. The whole yeah. pole was in the water. That well, I just, of course, I'm oh, looking. Oh, three, 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 three. three, three, three. Well, damn. Got him. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we right. go. Well, I screwed one up, and they gave me a second chance. I'll take it. I wonder if it was the same fish. Right. Yeah, sure. Golly, man, that's a big crappie. Not nearly as big as that one you dropped, but goodness gracious. How fun is that, man? So I missed one fish and they're all yelling, four, 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 and I looked at the wrong one and then set the hook on that and there was nothing there. And then sure enough, five seconds later, there's number three. And I mean, these guys school up, so it makes sense that you get those back-to-back -back bites like that, but that's not nearly as big as the one Brooks dropped, but uh, that's a good fish there. That's a good crappie. He'll definitely go 12, yeah. All right, well, like we've been saying, tough conditions today. It's crazy windy out there. It's swirling through here. We got the bluebird skies post front, but we got it done thanks to Shane here. We grinded through it. Got, I think we got seven keeper crappie and five keeper white bass. So plenty to fry up for Brooks and I. But we're gonna get all this stuff kind of packed back up. It's a process on its own. We're gonna go back, clean up the fish, and they're gonna cook us up for them in the slab shack. I'm looking forward to seeing how they cook them up. Jason was talking about doing it a way that I've never cooked crappie, so it should be a treat. We're gonna get back, so we'll see you guys back at the back at the slab shack. Y'all come go with us at Grenada Lake Charters. All right, so we just got back to the slab shack. Jason and Shane over here, they're cleaning these crappies. So I think the quintessential way, the way that everyone cleans and cooks crappie, you fillet them out, you batter them in something, and then you fry those fillets. They're talking about something different, which excites me. I hate cooking fish the same way over and over again. They are instead scaling these fish, taking the scales off, gutting the fish, and we're gonna fry them whole, which is funny, the parallels here, but this is what we do in Panama with the snapper that we catch, we do whole fried snapper. We're gonna do whole fried crappie, which to me is just kind of the blending of two different cultures. I've never heard of anyone doing this with crappie. Jason says once he started doing this, he won't do crappie any other way. So we're gonna cook them up. This is gonna be amazing. I, gonna, I already know it. What's actually going on? Like, what's actually <laughs> Mustard, something about that, that vinegar in it just turned out to be our secret ingredient huh where we used to milk or whatever else now we just yellow mustard yellow mustard we yellow mustard is what you use to get it to stick the, yes. the breading yes sir man that's a good one that was brooks's there there yeah so what we got in that batter uh salt and pepper a little bit of garlic powder right in it I'm excited for this, man. I've eaten crappie a bunch, but never this way. Delicious. And these crappie off these off grenade lake, they, they're some of the cleanest, whitest. Look at all those chunks of meat. Oh, yeah. Anyway. It's time for the taste test, the moment of truth. We're gonna throw one of these big old slabs on the plate, see what this is like, whole fried crappie. I've never had it. Right. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, I will, I will taste it. There you go, there you go. Shane, the man, the myth, the legend. Everybody we talked to, Shane outfished them all today. We outfished everybody on the lake today is what I heard. We're gonna try this, look at this. Go ahead, get a bite so, in. Oh, is it right now? Yeah, man. Let's try it. Look at that, it comes right off. Right off the bone there. Ooh, it's hot, but I'm not gonna wait. When have you ever waited? Fork! Fork off! We got... fork, yeah, fork, fork that. Dude, no, grab you a piece with the... 
here. You want me? Nope, I got it. Ain't no way I'd get involved in it. It's good, right? Look at my face. I'm like excited for you to try it. Tell me that's not amazing. I feel That's the way to do it right there. Look, it just comes off in these perfect little sheets, these little layers. Little, little crappie nuggets. Mm. This right here, fried whole. Anytime you leave the bones on any kind of meat, whether it's a steak, or fish, it kind of locks in some of that flavor, keeps it nice and moist. This is, my mouth is water. I took one bite, and my mouth is watering beyond my control. Flavorful, still crunchy, crispy on the outside, and just so moist and juicy on the inside. Jason, that's the best crop I've ever eaten in my whole life. Hands down, hands down. You guys, if you are filleting your crappie, you're doing it wrong. And I already know you are because everyone does. This is the way to cook crappie right here. That's the best bite of freshwater fish I've ever had in my whole life. That's phenomenal. Man, come on down to Mississippi, y'all. Get you some crappie and have Jason here cook them up at the Slab Shack. This is next level right here. So one thing I'm gonna try, Jason didn't endorse this, but I'm gonna try this. So in Panama, when we whole fry a snapper, one of my favorite parts are the fins. When you're deep frying a fish, when you're frying a fish, you can eat the fins and it's like this salty, slightly fishy, like lay, like ruffle, you know, with the ridges. We're gonna try this right here, I don't know. This is an experiment, this may go either way. But fish fin, deep fried, Phenomenal. Salty, crunchy, you bite right through it. Don't waste the fins, y'all. There's so much of the fish I realize that as Americans we mostly waste that if you fry the fish whole, you get to enjoy it. Look at that. This shows I'm like eating a spine. I'm about to like jump to death. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I can't shovel it in my face fast enough, Jason. Dude, that's so good. Let's see Brooks' opinion here. North Carolina boy might have a different taste. Nah. Nah. That's just good. I don't care who you are. Mmm. 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 I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's delicious. Hey, Perfect. Left Perfect. it speechless. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time since I had. A crappie. Most of the time, Carolinas we call them crappy, but crappy, crappy. crappy. It's amazing. I'll try it, Mike. Give me Cheers. A successful day. Mississippi is off to a phenomenal start. Couldn't be going better right now. It came up and I was like, Oh shit, you got a five-pound bass! And I was like, What's a crappie? I couldn't believe it. He <laughs> went hey, the camera. He got a well, you guys, the best crappie I've ever eaten in my whole life. I mean, just what a fun way to catch them. Learning a new technique to catch a crappie. I've always seen these guys with the 49 rods out the front. Didn't know what they were doing. It was cool to learn that today. Jason here runs this operation. You can come out here, book a guy to trip for crappie. It's a great way to fish with your family. You need no fishing experience. Shane or any of these guys are gonna tell you exactly what to do. You can book a cabin here, stay right here on the property, on the lake, and then come down here to the Slab Shack. They're gonna cook them up for you. It's just one-stop shop. Thanks so much. Where can they learn more about Granada Lake Charters, Jason? Good. You can check with us at Lakeway Sporting Goods at our store or visit us at GrenadaLakeCharters.com. GrenadaLakeCharters.com. They got the Lakeway, they got a tackle shop, everything you need. One stop shop here. Jason, thank you so much, man. Thank you. What an experience, man. What a great introduction to Mississippi. Couldn't have gone better. What a blast. Look, he's a popular man. Yeah, yeah. He's got, he's got hey. places to be. He's moving and shaking. Hey. <laughs> Well, that was a success. Yeah. I mean, it's been years since I've had a crappie fresh cooked, and there was a totally different way they did it too. Yeah. It was, that was awesome. It was I, cool to try something different yeah. than the way that everyone else cooks crappie. So uh, that was such a quick morning trip. We got back, we ate lunch with them, and we still got some time. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna head to the North Mississippi Fish Hatchery, learn a little bit about the fisheries here in Mississippi, maybe learn a little bit about what we're gonna be able to expect as we head south through the rest of the state. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. It's a massive facility from what I hear. We're gonna go check it out. It's only about 30 minutes away, so we'll see you guys there. Love learning new things. Yeah, man. Let's get it. Let's do it. All 
All right guys, so Brooks and I just got done fishing for crappie, had an absolute blast. Now, while we're here in Northern Mississippi, we wanted to come here to the North Mississippi Fish Hatchery to learn a little bit about what Mississippi's doing to not only protect its fisheries and conservation efforts here, but also to enhance them for the future and for the next generation. So I think it's gonna be pretty cool. They hatch over a million fish a year here. Let's go inside and check it out. All right guys, so this is Emily Jo Wiggins. She's gonna be our tour guide here at the North Mississippi Fish Hatchery today. Uh, Emily, you wanna tell us a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today? Well, we are the Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. We're owned and operated by the agency. We are the North Mississippi Fish Hatchery. We raise about a million fish every year, 10 to 12 different species of fish, wow. all sport fish, of course, to put back into Mississippi waters for public fishing. Great. So what we're gonna see today, we're about to start with crappie spawning and largemouth bass. So hopefully we can uh, give you a little more insight into what we do and how we do it for Mississippi's natural resources. Sounds great. You wanna get started? Yes, get started. Now these are our two 80 foot raceways. Okay. Raceways themselves are used for spawning and for holding fish. The male picks his nest, the female lays her eggs, he fertilizes them and then he chases her off and he will guard this. So what uh, we do is the hatchery actually takes these mats out and puts them in the hatchery so when they hatch, the male won't eat his young. Uh -huh. So we replace these with a new mat and let them spawn all over again. And we've got a few bass right here, you can see. The larger ones are the females. Right. There's actually mats here. They're spaced out so that way each male has his own spawning area, yes. Of course, what many people don't realize is that the largemouth bass is actually our state fish. It is, a, it is the state fish of Mississippi. Of course, we're famous for crappie in this area right. of the state, so everyone thinks that our state fish is crappie, right. but it's not, it's the largemouth. I actually had a gentleman, he was from Missouri, he came and he said, uh, Lady, do you have any good crappie fishing in Mississippi? <laughs> I said, I can safely say we do. He said, because on my wall back home, I've got a pound and a half mounted. <laughs> I said, on my wall here in the museum, I've got the five pound, three ounce world record. <laughs> he said, they get that big. I said, sir, we eat pound and a half crappie down yeah, here. Yeah, that's an eater around We here. don't mount those. <laughs> right. It's a very intensive process that goes into raising the different species of fish because each species of fish is different. Sure. Crappie spawn when water temps hit about 65 degrees. Now, how would you like to catch one of those? Yeah. <laughs> Bruce here lost an absolute giant, the biggest crappie I've ever laid eyes on. I thought it was a bass when it came up. Yeah, we hear a lot of fish stories coming through here. You wouldn't believe how many world records have been caught and got away. Of course. So, it's always yeah. the one that got away. And now these little fish in here, is that food? Yes, that is their forage while they are in house, so to speak. That's gotta be a horrible place to be a minnow. We had white crappie in the aquarium, but our 20 pound channel cat decided to kill them in front of all our 10th graders. Oh, great. They loved it. <laughs> Fall just determine where fish are needed. And we get, at the end of the year, we get what's called a stocking order in. Okay. And then we see, okay, we need a certain amount of fish of a certain species in this lake or this lake or this area. And we try to fill that order. We can give you a better idea. So basically we bring in uh, the females and males. We what we call strip spawning, we will harvest the eggs from the female, basically squeeze out the eggs and the sperm from the male. We'll add a uh, water solution to that and stir it with a turkey feather. And we do that because it won't rupture the eggs. It's soft on the eggs. <laughs> and then once we have those fertilized eggs, we put them into these McDonald hatching jars. Basically what this does, it will keep the eggs separated, but also provide them with oxygen. So we could have uh, 100,000 fish, you know, hatching out and going over into this container at one time. Once they are in that container, what people don't realize is that fish uh, don't have mouths when they first hatch out. They're really? feeding off their yolk sac. Once their mouth parts form, then the hatchery staff will take these fry, we put them into uh, one of our hatchery ponds, and we let them grow all summer long. You know, our whole mission is to conserve and enhance Mississippi's natural resources. We focus primarily on fish population numbers. So everything starts inside the hatchery. Then once those eggs hatch, the young fry are placed into these production ponds. And each pond will hold a different species of fish. Okay. We have 16 one acre ponds. Wow. Each one holds over a million gallons of water. Wow. How big are you growing the fish in these outdoor ponds? All right, so these will be fingerling size. That's two to four inches, okay. it depends. 
Yeah. I was about to ask you how much I had to pay you to let me fish in one of these ponds, but these are you all smaller fish. You do not want to fish <laughs> in these ponds right okay. here. So no, there's, there's no eight pound large mouth swimming around. There are no ponds. slabs, there are no monsters, <laughs> there's nothing worth bragging about in these ponds. So I won't break in and trespass tonight with a fishing rod, got it. You can actually see, and that's where the fish will be collected okay. in that basin there. And that's when, uh, of course, all this requires hard work, but that's when the leg work really starts because they have to net out those fingerlings and it's an extensive operation but you have thousands upon thousands of fingerlings and you're trying to get them from one area to another as fast as we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's, I did not realize the scope of this operation before we got here. I tell you what, we'll walk out by the catfish pond, see if we can get some of them up so you can get some footage there. We do public programs for, you know, people coming in, but we do specific programs for schools or for just for kids, like our fishing rodeos, and that is one of our favorite because they're our future. Yeah. They're the future anglers. They're the future record holders. Yeah, yeah. And they're the ones that are going to take care of it, hopefully. They're the future conservationists. Yeah, exactly. So you let them fish in this pond? Yes, and they get to keep what they catch. You get to keep what they catch? You should have brought some rods. <laughs> We're gonna see if we can uh, coax them up a little bit. <laughs> oh, is that the move? See them moving. Is that the dinner bell? <laughs> they are used to being stop fed here. You know, fish will... Go ahead, Robert, give it a stop. Yeah. Well, they can feel the vibrations. Oh. oh, there's some big ones too. I feel like it'd be hard to single one out. If y'all want to hire someone to come out here and fish to the catch it, yeah. I'm, av I'm available. Just trying. After we got through with the youth rodeo, uh, we opened it up and let the veterans and the nursing home residents come in and fish after they did. Uh, and that truthfully was so it, it, we enjoyed it, I think, as much or more than they did. Right. One of the veterans, and he was in a wheelchair, he caught the largest fish. His rod was literally U-shaped. He was so proud because he caught the biggest fish. He, he had the record of the day. Yeah. And they actually took it back and filleted it and cooked it for him. That's incredible. That right there. That's rewarding. Yes. That's, you're making a difference, you know, not just the fisheries. It's, lots. it's really cool. Speaking of big fish, we're going to see the world record crappie. Go check out the world record crappie, see what Brooks and I got to beat this week. <laughs> Our exhibits take you through fishing past and present. I mean, as a kayak angler, I'm kind of big on moving around under my own power. This does not seem like the most efficient way to go about it, I'm not going to lie. Can you imagine being on a river? <laughs> Look at this backpack shocker. Oh, wow. This is what, before they had a boat to do it. What, so they're waiting, like walking around waiting? Can that seems, see the picture right that there? seems dangerous. They've got it on their back. With rubber waders, I guess, to keep them from shocking themselves. Oh. So how would you like to catch a fish that way? Yeah, the, the shocking was cool in the boat, um, wading in the water while I'm shocking it with a generator strapped to my back seems <laughs> mildly risky, not gonna lie. Yeah, and all these, of course, are antique lures. We've got hula poppers, we've got lucky 13s. And then these are fingerlings. This is the size our fish are when they actually leave the hatchery and they're stocked throughout the state. Nice. And hopefully they'll get this big. <laughs> World <laughs> record cropping. Now, a lot of people ask, is this the right color? Is that no? So 1957, the world record was caught. And this is the way it was done. And that's just part of the history of it. So we left it as is, but five pounds, three ounces. It was truly a monster. Sir, and I didn't realize that it came out of right here. Yes. You did like. How cool is that? That's where we were fishing. 1957, and the largemouth bass record's held since 54. Makes you wonder if anyone will ever beat them, you know? Well, like I said, records are made to be broken. Yeah. It's very interesting how fish can find their prey, uh, how different the similar fish are. You know, like a catfish, their whole body is covered in that. So whatever they touch, they're tasting, hmm. and which, uh, you know, our young people think it's so interesting. So if I pick up a catfish, they're tasting me. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. I feel like they probably don't think we taste good. I would, I would but guess. they taste great. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they that taste great. Right. The aquarium itself is 10,000 gallons. We had two paddlefish in the tank, but our alligator gar decided he was going to eat them both. <laughs> so we no longer the pesky have. gar. <laughs> now, of course, yes. we have a bass right there that replaced the 15 pounder. 
Uh, we've got about 13 different species in the tank right now. Um, you were telling me the 15 pounder is no longer in there. No longer in there. Because it yes. was eating everything. Uh, what I heard. 15 pounds, gorgeous bass. It was a monster. Uh, but she uh, ate her snake, ate the crawfish, started in on the other fish. So she had to go. We re released her, and every bass angler that came in, they're like, Where is it? Right. They wanted to go for that fish. And then when I tell them it's in the river, their hearts just sink. Yes. Well, it's cool to me because I. I kind of would hope that the 15 pounder would be eating everything in sight. You know, you think of it as just such a top predator. I'm glad they live up to their, their reputation. Of course, one species that we just added was the uh, flathead catfish, which is staying up in that log right there. Oh, Our uh, state record on the flathead is actually 88 pounds. A uh, wow. guy was hand grabbing for it. Yep. Let's Our see. Our guy yesterday was asking us if we ever do that yeah. noodling, and uh, I haven't yet. That's on my list. Well, it's cool to see, you know, knowing what I know about noodling and reaching your hand down in some creepy hole in the river. It's cool to see the flatheads sitting down in there in that log. I mean, just kind of like you would imagine them doing. Yeah. Our biologist will bring us fish to uh, put into the aquarium. And down here, of course, is our sturgeon. Sturgeon are protected in Mississippi. And they're native. They are native. Is that a lake sturgeon or is that the species? We have two different species in Mississippi. We have our pallid sturgeon and our shovel nose. All right, guys, well, that's all the time we've got here at the fish hatchery. Huge thanks to Emily Jo Wiggins here. She's just so knowledgeable and friendly and just really made this easy for us. But um, where can they learn more about what you guys do here and find out more information? If you want to know more about fishing in Mississippi or anything about the hatchery operations, go to www.mdwfp.com. On there, you can find out information about our programs, fish stocking, fishing reports for the individual lakes. So if you're interested in coming for a visit or if you're local and want to hit a particular lake, go online, look at our fishing reports. There's a lot of information there for anglers that just want to get out and enjoy the beauty of Mississippi. Well, maybe we'll do that before our next stop. We got more fishing on the agenda. Well, thanks so much Thank for you. your time. Thank it's such you. a pleasure. I learned our a ton pleasure. today. I hope you guys Thank did too. Thank you. Yeah, this was great. All right, guys, well, I hope you found that as educational and interesting as we did. I thought it was so cool learning about not just what the state's doing to really enhance these fisheries, but also just a lot about fish themselves. I kind of like to consider myself an expert, but I learned quite a bit today, so super cool. I've just blown away here at our first stop. It could not have gone better. Hugh White State Park here is so nice for an RVer. If you want to come out here with your family, cannot recommend this enough. Cannot recommend Granada Lake fishing charters enough. That would be great for kids. No fishing experience required. The guides are gonna really hold your hand through it and, and let you have a good time. That whole thing was awesome. Just a, from beginning to end, the whole setup, the whole shebang. Yeah, was, yeah. I had never done that. I had seen boats doing that. I always kind of wondered what was going on there. So it was really cool to learn about all that. But that's all the time we got for this part of Mississippi. We are gonna be heading south from here. We're gonna be rolling through the Delta meeting up with Steve Azar, famous country singer. We're gonna be checking out some museums, some historical sites, learning a lot about the birthplace of blues music, Mississippi. Maybe do some crappie fishing there. We're gonna head on from there, go to Vicksburg, maybe do some catfishing on the mighty Mississippi River. That seemed like it needed to be on our list. And then we'll be working our way down south to the coast, doing some red fishing, speckled trout, flounder, a lot more Mississippi in store. Stay tuned to the series, guys. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. I think we're gonna get into some fun adventures. What are you excited for most? Redemption, man. Yeah. Crappie redemption. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, and then I love the coast, man. I love redfish and yeah. trout, so. Well, that'll be the one thing that's really in our wheelhouse, the redfish, yeah. and so that'll be fun when we get down there. But that's it for this time, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please stay tuned. We will see you guys next week. I don't know what we're gonna get into, but it's gonna be a good time. That much I do know. <laughs> Wait, we don't have a good time. Nah, not us. Nah. We'll catch you guys next week. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the farm. I'm pulling up the truck down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising, baby. Get a little stuff. It's a Saturday joy ride.
out here, ladies in the rear, your feet in the water, top disappears, drinking Malibu Patron. <laughs>